Eight bit chef. This is a story of life and death, but mostly death. A story of how my arrogance got my friends and myself killed. This is the story of the Oregon Trail. The Oregon Trail is a parody of the wildly popular Oregon Trail edutainment games, only instead of a pioneer leading a covered wagon party, you play as a ragtag group of survivors riding a station wagon across the United States. Your party members still get diseases, and you still have to deal with ever-depleting resources. However, not only do you have to survive the elements to make it to the safe haven, but you also have to deal with a post-apocalyptic wasteland infested with zombies and the dangers that brings. Our story begins just outside of Washington, D.C., late one night. I had fortified myself in a makeshift bunker of sandbags, a horde of undead shuffling towards me. With only four rounds left in my rifle, I knew for sure I wasn't making it out alive. God damn it, if I was gonna go down, I was gonna go down swinging. All four shots hit their marks, and just as the second wave of undead made their approach, a stranger appeared as if from nowhere. With cat-like reflexes, he shot down the remaining walkers. The man, grizzled and middle-aged, approached me. Well then, looks like I just saved your bacon. I reckon we stand a better chance out there if we stick together. My name's Clements. I used to be a priest. Not much use for those nowadays. What's your name, partner? I inform him that my name is Spencer, and thank him for saving my ass. The pleasure's all mine, Spencer. Listen, even with the two of us, we won't survive very long. Everyone I trust died a while back. Do you know anyone you can count on in a pinch? People I could count on? I knew those people the moment the question was asked. Who better than my friends and fellow content creators? GC Positive, Culture Plays, Skip the Game, and Amy Knightley. I'd trust these people with my life on and off the internet. Clements nods to me as I list off my most trusted friends before speaking. There's a good chance that if we're still alive, they'll be at the shelter up in D.C. That is, if they have any sense. I'm gonna need a way to get around. I saw an old station wagon a few blocks back. Those things might not be very reliable, but you'd be surprised how roomy they are. Anyway, let's get moving. With that, Clements began leading me to the wagon. I immediately got the sense something was wrong when Clements stumbled into a range target. But put those thoughts aside as we reached the station wagon. Clements, to my abject horror, hopped in the driver's seat. All right, I think I've got just enough food and fuel for us to make it to DC in this baby. Let's hit the road. I'll drive. As I said before, Oregon Trail is a parody of the Oregon Trail, and as such, things like broken arms can occur. I should be grateful, though. At least it's not Oregon Trail's infamous. And the award for fastest time game fan service is Oregon Trail. Just as we were approaching town, a walker stumbled up to the window. Clements had, for whatever reason, left rolled down. In the commotion, he got bit, as I would later find out. I should have known something was off about that guy when he got stuck on a range target, but it was too late now. The station wagon ran out of gas just as we entered the city limits and coasted to a stop just outside of the safe house. From a nearby window, I could hear a radio blaring. Repeat, all survivors who still remain in Washington, D.C. The government has declared a class three biohazard I'm not sure what the hell a class 3 biohazard is, but I sure as hell know what a nuclear strike is. Picking up on this time restraint, Clements decided to be best to fight our efforts. While I scavenged for resources, he'd go to the shelter and look for my friends. How the hell some random ex-priest would know what my friends looked like is beyond me, but before I had a chance to retort, he was already gone. This is the Oregon Trail's equivalent of purchasing supplies from the town general store. Only instead of money, time is our limitation. Each resource takes a certain amount of time to scavenge, and the difficulty you choose at the start determines your time available. Since I'm playing on normal, that gives me 12 hours to gather what I can. Weighing my options carefully, I make the most out of my time and gather what I decide is most critical. Just as time is running out, Clements arrives with my friends. 
Clements approaches me. He looks worse for wear and is struggling to get words out. Great. Everyone's here. There's just one more thing. Back there on the road, one of those things bit me. I'm already not feeling too well, and I can't send the thought of becoming one of them. You're going to have to put me down. Why don't you keep my journal? It may help you out there. Good luck. This is where the game introduces one of its unique mechanics that differentiates itself from the other Trails games. If one of your party members gets bitten, they will turn into a zombie if their health drops to zero. No ifs, ands, or buts. You are then left with a choice. Do you prolong the inevitable, wasting precious resources to keep them alive that could go to other party members, or do you make the call and put them down? Clements gives us no choice in this matter. Your dying friends will leave it in your hands. And so, our adventure begins. <laughs> Give me a moment. And so, our adventure begins! Okay, not great, but at least it's better than... Oh, for f Okay, okay, for real this time. No restarting, no matter what happens. And so, our adventure begins. As soon as we left the city, a blizzard struck. The inclement weather would cause us to proceed much slower than desired, but I wasn't about to take any risk with my friends' lives. After a few miles, the skies began to clear up. Shortly after, we were able to rummage some medical supplies off some poor dead sods on the side of the road. Things were looking up, or so it seemed. Despite insisting he stay near the car and use a nearby bush, Colin demanded that he'd be given some privacy while he pee. I chalked his stuff up to another case of bad RNG luck, but when you do shit like this, you get what you deserve. Chicken by the fact that one of our friends was now fucking dead, we took solace in the fact that now there was one less mouth to feed. Eventually, we made her to our first stop, Pittsburgh. Throughout your journey, you will stop at different cities dotted across the United States. These cities is where you can buy or sell supplies, take on jobs to earn more cash or supplies, in either an auto shop or a combat trainer. Seeing as how I was only able to scavenge $50, I decided to see what jobs I can take on. Someone from another party informs me that a crate fell off their car on the way into town and that they'll pay me $34 to retrieve it. Slowly, I made my way back, block by block dodging walkers on my way, and making sure to only use ammo when necessary. But in the end, I made it, and I was rewarded handsomely. After restocking on supplies, we decided it was time to head out. Shortly after leaving town, we approached upon a massive horde of zombies. This is basically Oregon Trail's equivalent of fording rivers. Instead of the size and speed of rivers, you must determine the best course of action based on the size and temperament of the horde. You can either break out your guns and shoot your way through, the risky option, attempt to sneak through, a safer option, or you can hire mercenaries to escort you through, the safest way but most expensive. You can also wait to see if the horde disperses or if the temperament drops. I determined that the horde did not seem too big, and opted for the shoot 'em up option. Whether due to luck or due to skill, we made it through. A rainstorm slows our progress, at one point even blowing some supplies off the roof. Tanner got out to tighten down the straps, but not before... Not before getting bit in the ankle. The entire car grows somber, knowing full well that Tanner's days with us were numbered. Eventually, we made it to the mall. Upon arrival, I once again checked the job boards. One of the locals is having a hard time sleeping because they keep seeing movement outside. They ask I clear out the offending party, a horde of zombies, in exchange for one can of gas. This job plays out just like the tutorial. You stand barricaded behind sandbags and shoot down all the green bastards that shuffle your way. With the job complete, I resupplied the shop again before departing. Yet again, another rainstorm kicks up, slowing our progress. As if this weather wasn't already a downer enough, GC told a story about a time before this whole mess even started, depressing everyone. The irony of someone named Positive depressing the whole group isn't lost on me. Eventually, we made it to Indianapolis, and here is where my arrogance began to take its toll on the party. I determined that we were in okay enough shape to where we didn't need to stop, and instead, just drove on through. A few miles down the road, and we all stopped for a bathroom break. However, despite staying near the car, unlike Colin, disaster still strikes. Tanner trips on his way back, breaking his leg. I used one of the med kits to splint his leg, 
taking this time to also patch up Emily and GC. With that taken care of, we get on our way. I spot something happening off the side of the road, but not wanting to get involved with something potentially dangerous, I keep on... I keep on driving until... Just as we were approaching the farmlands, I fell asleep at the wheel. The impact of hitting a parked car wakes me. Everybody is shaken, but alright. Except for Tanner. Having used some of the med kits just up the road, Tanner said it didn't make sense to delay the inevitable. He was dying, and asked that I finish things before he turned. I'm... I'm sorry, Tanner. In somber silence, I approached the job board. Somebody is offering $78 in exchange for retrieving a lost item. They tell me it's suicide to attempt. I accept it anyway. The venture starts out promising. I'm dodging walkers left and right. Suddenly, more and more shamble in. A rather large zombie leaps in front of me. I fire my rifle, but the bolt only stuns the fat bastard. I reload my gun, making my way around the tree as I do so, only to have old Big Green grab me. I escape with my life, but fail the job. The encounter left me with a nasty gash, but as fortune would have it, not a bite mark on me. At the campfire, I use one of the three remaining medkits to patch myself up. I look over at my two remaining friends. They look worse for wear as well. I make the decision now to use the last two medkits to patch them up, one for each. Now, however, we were in trouble. With $37 to our name, and medkits selling for $29 a pop, we could afford only one between the three of us. With no money left, and food rations running low, I am left with no choice. I need to scavenge for food. The scavenging minigame plays out much like hunting did back in the original Oregon Trail. You walk around the map, gun in hand, only instead of killing game for food, you use the gun to kill off zombies while you pick up food and scrap that appear randomly across the map. Lucky for me, the undead must have been taking a nap because there were only a handful shuffling around. I was able to scrounge up 35 ounces of food and 10 scrap. Not a terrible haul for a first time. With food in tow, we decided it's best to leave this place and its memories behind. Unfortunately for us, fate had other plans as a gang of bikers followed us out of the city. Swerving left and right between highway lanes, I knocked the riders from their bikes one by one, leaving them tumbling at the roadside. After what felt like an hour, the last rider finally tumbled to a stop. Pedal to the metal, I sped away from the scene, not looking back on the carnage I created. Eventually, we made it to Chicago. Without a second thought, I made my way to the job board. The man there informs me that a group of bandits have holed up in a nearby building. He fears they may take over the town. Not on my watch. This introduces the third and final job type in the base game, the shootout. Unlike zombies, who mindlessly shamble towards you, the bandits seek cover in their building, only popping their heads out to aim and fire at you. It is during this time that you must react and fire back. After a long intense battle, all the bandits were cleared out, and I was rewarded with $39. With cash in hand, I headed to the market stall in hopes of buying some more medical supplies, only to find out that the only items for sale were food rations and cans of gas. Dreading the thought of running out, I stocked up on two cans of gas and 30 ounces of food before heading out. Military blockades and car fires aside, we made it to St. Louis. Again, my arrogance strikes. I feel as though we are well enough on to push on without a second look. Soon afterwards, we hear a rumbling sound approaching from behind. A stampede of zombified deer. I do my best to avoid the waves of green as they run alongside the car. Eventually they disperse and we continue on down the road. We make a stop at a safe house hidden in a cave and after performing another retrieval job, I managed to buy another medical kit. But there's a problem. While I'm feeling fine, both GC and Emily are looking like shit. I'm stuck with a decision. Which of my two friends do I give it to? I mold the decision over in my head before hastily handing Emily the medical kit and heading for the car. The thought of helping one friend but condemning another was weighing on me like a ton of bricks. A few miles down the road, a sandstorm kicked up forcing me to slow down, despite how badly I wanted to make it to the next town and get another medical kit for my friend. Eventually, it got to the point where I felt lost. GC and I spent over an hour arguing about directions. The trip was starting to take its toll on us. The stress of the situation was causing me to argue with people that I considered friends. How petty of me. I was so distracted by my bad mood that I didn't notice a deer leap out in front of the car. We jerked to a stop, giving everyone whiplash. Once we settled down, we continued on down the road. The sandstorm passed soon afterwards, and Emily decided that she wanted some fresh air. Just as she rolled down the window, a zombie staggered up to the car. Emily screamed and threw a large can of beans at the zombie, 
stunning it long enough for us to drive away. As soon as we reached Memphis, I approached the job board. I took and completed a recovery job in exchange for cash. Money in hand, I made my way to the shop to buy... nothing. The stall was completely empty. I could feel my heart drop to my gut in a second. I had doomed my friend. By blowing through those towns back there, I missed out on a chance of getting valuable medical kits. And now as a result, GC was near comatose. Solemnly, we returned to the car and left the city, only to have another biker gang follow us out. It was not until after the fight that I had noticed the inevitable. GC was completely incapacitated. I had to make it to the next town. I had to get medical supplies, and fast. Not more than a few miles down the road, and tragedy struck. Emily had also fallen unconscious. Both my friends were clinging on for life. The urgency of making it to town now doubled, but it was too late. GC had died. I floored the gas, racing for the prison safe house, but just as I could see it over the hill, Emily also died. All of my friends were now gone, and I was all alone. I coasted the car into the safe house, speechless. As I walked by the job board, I was flagged down. A massive horde of zombies were approaching town. Without a word, I nodded to the man and made my way to the sand bed bunker. I filled my anger into every bullet I fired. I wouldn't stop until every fucking zombie was eliminated. Without a word, I took the reward money and headed for the shop. I bought an exorbitantly priced med kit and some food with my remaining money. Eventually, I made it to a hospital. I decided to rest here for a few hours to build up some strength. The realization that I should have allowed my friends to do the same hits me with crippling guilt. I try and repair the car a little bit before hitting the road. Next stop, Dallas. I was driving down the highway when I heard a rumbling sound. Shit, another stampede. Despite my best efforts to avoid the zombified deer, the station wagon just wasn't having it. Overrun by the zombie deer, the car violently shook back and forth, jostling me around in the process. My face slammed against the steering wheel. Eyes blackened and bruised, all I could do was wait it out. When it was all over, I put my foot on the gas. Nothing. The station wagon was too damaged to move. I had been pushing myself too hard and decided that now was as good a time as any for a quick nap to get some energy back. When I awoke, I realized that I had no choice but to scavenge for parts to fix the car. I was dead in the water otherwise. Desperately, I looked for any and all scrap I could get my hand on. Slowly but surely, the walkers closed in on me. I was able to escape with my life and some scrap. Hastily, I repaired the wagon to the best of my ability. Luckily, the car turned over. I can proceed. I was not in good shape. I could feel it. I was dipping in and out of consciousness. I could tell my time was near, when suddenly... Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already and want to catch more of my content, go ahead and hit that big red subscribe button. I'd like to give a special thanks to my friends Cullen, Emily, Tanner, and GC for allowing me to use them in this video. Links to their channels can be found in the description. Thanks again, and have a nice day.